Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the final week of the regular season for EGFH's season in League of Legends. In case you missed it, we just watched the Green Knights take a convincing win over the Pioneers, and now we're going to be getting into a match between St. Thomas More's Fair Fail and Notre Dame's, once again, the Green Knights. I'm Superman, and I'm joined here by Vic Sharp. I am so excited for this game, Superman. We've kind of been talking about this. This is it. The final streamed game of the regular season, and it couldn't be better. It is the battle for first place. Winner gets that number one seed and could be all important seed. Uh, as we've seen this kind of division as the season's gone on between the top three teams and kind of the rest. So I'm really interested to watch this one play out. Yeah, I'm super excited too, Vic. I mean, this is the first place and second place battling it out coming into playoff weekend, right? So this could be a preview of what might even be the finals of this entire series. So I'm really excited to see once again, this is going to be fair fail on blue versus green knights on red. You can see as these bands come through, a couple lady carries a, a pair of top laners and two junglers, pretty standard coming through, right? They match at least, but Jarvan gets first picked. I love this pick in this meta. He is, he can be flexed to an extent, but he is still in my mind, one of the strongest junglers. But we just saw Green Knights do the Superman and they get it again, high and blazing it, getting the Ezreal. Can lightning strike twice? I sure hope so. I mean, it's so much fun to watch, Vic. We saw Ezreal here, high and blazing it, went like six and zero oh in what, the first 12 minutes of the match. And by that 15 minute mark, when the Nexus exploded, he had 8.3 thousand gold in his pockets, in items, in gold. It's just so much damage available to him at only 15 minutes in, when the enemy team collectively had less than twice that amount. So he had almost half as much gold as the enemy team. Yeah, but I love it. We are getting the battle of the strongest, some of the strongest AD carries in this meta with the Tristana locked in on the side of Fairfell. That's another one of those picks that benefits so much. And unlike the Jinx that we saw in the previous game from the Pioneers, this Tristana can match wave clear. Yeah, it's just kind of insane, to be honest. There's just only so much you can do against an Ezreal that can get like an eight minute Triforce. I joked about it last time, but we saw it almost kind of happen. He instead completed the Monomune first, uh, instead of the Triforce first, but all that damage, we saw how much it was. He could just 1v2 on that Ezreal. So Tristana, matching the wave clear, not going to lose a tower so early. Probably is really good. And of course, Braum, going to put up the unbreakable, block a few Ezreal ultimates. At least that's the hope. But Jarvan, Tristana, Braum, definitely have a lot of scaling and team fight potential. But Tarek ultimate, the ultimate team fighting tool. I'm not really sure which of these teams is on a greater edge at this point. Well, it's definitely, to me, showing that Green Knights loved what they ran last game because picking the Warwick again as well, Brock 880 didn't necessarily need to have the best game on that, but he did what he needed to do against Pioneers, and it was keep Umbrisk in check. Yeah, and I mean, Umbrisk ended up on that uh, Rek'Sai being so squishy, it couldn't even initiate for his team, but... Hopefully, we'll see that Warwick performance once again, just, you know, munching on whatever gets served to him on a golden platter. That's what last game looked like, but now we see the last ban come through. Teemo, you might think it's a troll ban, but let me tell you, Teemo's actually busted right now as a top laner. Here's why. You take Summon Airy, you wouldn't think that that's a good spell. you think more, oh, what's a caster? Is this, you know, is it uh, Oriana that can send that Airy to someone? Is it a Lulu that can use it just like Pix? Well, guess what? Airy deals damage every time that she is uh, that she attaches to an enemy or gives a bonus shield whenever she attaches to an ally. And the only cooldown on summon Airy is the travel time between you and your target. Airy will fly from you to the target, circle them once, and then return to you. So, in uh, I've, do I've done this, alright? So uh, with Teemo, your E passive, the damage tick from your poison, typically will last long enough for Airy to make two trips from one auto attack. So the damage that you can apply as Teemo is actually insane with your miniature trades in lane. So you al almost always will take people off guard by the amount of damage you can actually put out very, very early on in the match. 
Yeah, but Superman, kind of looking back at these Pikmin, we're in the final pick, and it looks like we're going to get the Protect the Ezreal against the Unstoppable team fight from Fairfail. Yes. I am a little concerned, though. Superman, I want your opinion. Look at Fairfell. Who is going to be doing non-physical damage? Pretty much Lucian's W. Let's be honest here, right? Like, <laughs> Braum, right? He'll press Q. Well, honestly, you just bring up a great point, Vic. Full AD composition here. And who better to stack armor than Tark? Who better to stack armor than Shen and Warwick? These people are just going to steamroll if they can get those armor items. Think about it. Shen W, even is just going to block so much damage. These are primarily auto-attacking champions. The Tristana, the Lucian, even Braum could be arguably the primar primarily auto-attacking champion since he has to help proc his passive. And of course, Nar and Jarvan. They all use their auto-attacks for a major source of their damage. And if Shen throws down a W in a very, very good spot in his team, his whole team is not going to take any damage. So this is really strong. Really, really strong. And even if they happen to get through that Shen thing I was just talking about, sorry, Tarek presses R, and you lose the fight. Yeah, I, I really think this is Fairfell kind of throwing a gauntlet down, saying we can win this game early, because I think that's how they win. If this Jarvan gets rolling, if, you know, something we didn't mention is for anyone that's watched this season along with us, Love is playing top lane for this game. Um, and they've put him on something that can actually carry a team fight, kind of, and or split push, on its own, so they're really kind of putting their chickens in Allure Love and in on Nuo. Uh, Fairfell is hoping their solo lanes can carry this. I actually like that kind of an idea. I mean, they're moving their skill cap, right, up to the top lane on a champion like Nar, who builds a Black Claver Cushion Shred Armor in the first place, but of course, you know that a proper Nar ultimate that catches multiple targets can turn a team fight. It doesn't matter if they have completed uh, thorn mails at 20 minutes or something like that it doesn't matter if they're just off the map anyway because they got crowd controlled to death the thorn mail can't actually return a kill at this point so i'm really excited to see how that top lane shapes out but just one and a half minutes left before we load on to summoner's rift again this is a match between fair fail in second place versus green knights in first this is going to be an explosive hard fought match we know it'll be close we're looking at early game for Fairfell. They want to smash through turrets, dive you, get real aggressive real early so that they can snowball into an early victory. And then, of course, Green Knights with their amazing performance last match, looking to do more of the same coming here into our second match of the day. Again, I'm Superman. Vic Sharp's with me, and we're ready to get underway. Yeah, and I have to love... We've, all, we've kind of praised on Nuo a lot this season, partially just for his stellar play i love his thinking of the game already though he's taken lucian and it's a pick that can put a lot of damage onto something like the anivia early on it absolutely has kill pressure and he also took a cleanse he knows that when you fight green knights you are not fighting one person when you have a Tarek stun when you have a shin taunt when you have an anivia stun that cleanse is vital for this lucian survival Yes, it is. Unfortunately, cleansed does not work on a Warwick ultimate. And suppress, not going to be able to be cleansed away. But pretty much everything else that he might be worried about, he can use that summoner spell to get a little bit ahead. But I'm really just excited to see how this bottom lane goes. I'm not actually sure if Kleptomancy, I imagine it would, but I am not sure if Kleptomancy would proc off of a Q that lands from the Ezreal onto a Braum shield. What do you think, Vic? Uh, I, I think that's an interaction that I actually haven't seen yet, but I would have to think it would proc because Braum still does technically take some form of damage number. Um, if you ever have played the Braum, when you get hit with your shield up, you still see a damage number pop up, even if it's not necessarily really doing damage. It's kind of how much you've blocked. So it's interesting for sure. Um, we'll probably get to see, but as we get into the loading screen... We haven't done this so much, Superman, but who do you think? This match is so important. Who do you give the edge to right now? Ooh, that's kind of a tough one, Vic. I, I actually... I'm really excited for Fair Fail. I like their aggressive team comp. I like that they uh, went for this. And, and Nuo on Illusion, I expect him to pop off pretty hard. 
But we saw Olympus has been really good on mid, kind of consistent on those mages. But Anivia actually is countered by Lucian. So we might see the Lucian being the one that pops off early and can carry his team through that early game into a snowballing match. But I honestly think if if Fairfell can't finish the game in 10 minutes, like make it look like they're going to win by the 10 minute mark, I actually think that Green Knights will just outscale. They'll get too much armor and there's only so much you can do, right? Even if on Nuo and Allurlov both went Black Cleaver builds to try and make it so that Tristrana can deal enough damage, I just don't see it being enough to deal with an invulnerability composition here. That seems to be the case. I mean, Anivia can re resurrect, the Shen can tr block auto attacks, and Tarek as, you know, the crowning jewel, if you may, <laughs> to this entire composition. Pressing R, making his whole team invulnerable, if possible. So, if first, uh, I just, I, I have to give it to Green Knights. They're number one, please. they're first place. They're gonna no do it again. <laughs> Big confidence, I like it. Um, but you know, we're on to the, that was such a quick loading screen, but you know, I have a new name for this game, Superman. It's the League of Press the Attack. Cause we saw four in this game yet again. Yeah, I, it's a lot. And I'm not sure if I agree with choosing press the attack on multiple members. I think if you have a five man squad, you're not in like solo key or something. And then the best thing you can do is instead take press the attack on someone you know is going to be in the team fights like this Warwick, right? You don't intend for him to split push. And he typically will get uh, three auto attacks onto especially like a tank, right? So if you can get Warwick to take press the attack, or Ezreal, for example, who can get quick auto resets um, with applying his Q, that's a possibility. I wouldn't take it on the Ezreal just because I think the opportunity cost against Kleptomancy is too high, but I don't, I don't really agree with multiple members on e either of these teams taking it. I think you just need one person to proc it for the team fight and other people to have their own uh, keystones that are more suited for especially laning phase if you're going this kind of a early game composition but that's a really good question Vic. down here this bottom lane though you're gonna see these trades keep happening between the ezra and tristana just trading a couple auto attacks ezra looking for those precise pokes but we'll have to see how things play out what do you think who do you think wins this bottom lane just the 2v2 in the just the 2v2 i have to give the edge to green knights i think the fact that Ezreal's poke is a little more reliable, Tristana seems to be more focused on wave clear. Uh, and Tarek has an easier stun just by nature. So really, while it's close, Green Knights seem to have a small advantage. Yeah, I, I guess I would agree with that. You can see a uh, mana potion stolen there by the Ezreal. He's going to get a further bit of sustain down there. But you can see all of these press the attack options just popping up with their visuals we can see an invade here in the top lane i'm not sure if it's safe enough for this Jarvan to push up he has his lucian pushed up real far in this mid lane but i'm not really sure if you can rotate through at this point in the match we're gonna see this clash up here in the jungle brock 80 uh, 880 gonna actually get the smite steal and really nicely played by him he gets that level four as well we're gonna heal up back to full health he went into that with half, so a little bit of time wasted here by Barcode on this Jarvan. Yeah, a little unfortunate. It was a very hopeful uh, invade, in my opinion. I kind of agree with you. And we have just seen so much being stolen away from High and Blazing it. Two mana pots, a green ward. Uh, he's just getting so much from this stuff to Mancy already. Yep. And he has that total biscuit of rejuvenation as well, just in case he takes a little bit more push, uh, poke than he wishes he would. Nice block on both the stuns by Dreamy here. One more auto attack will actually get the stun. A couple more autos will deal more damage, but there's the eye of blazing it, taking a lot of damage. Gets a fortitude pot from his passive as well. That kleptomancy just doing so much work for him. And of course, that total biscuit of your rejuvenation, not even going to be neat to use as he's just healing himself back up. Yeah, absolutely. We did see the answer to the question, though, Superman. It looks like it does still proc off of the Braum shield. So uh, as much as the Braum shield helps the damage, not going to do anything against those Kleptomancy procs. Yeah, exactly. Now, down here in this bottom lane, you've got Tristana versus Ezreal. They're looking really close in farm. A little bit of a farm advantage in mid for Anuo on this solution over Lepis' Anivia. But all in all, 
There's only about a 50 gold lead that this Ezreal has gained from his Kleptomancy. And in top lane, it's cl too close to call for either of these champions to do anything with that kind of a lead this early on. Four minutes in, almost five. We haven't even seen gank come through from these junglers as the Warwick starts making his way down bottom side. Yeah, something key to note there though, Superman, Anivia no longer has the egg. On Nuo was able to take Lepus down enough to proc the passive and it actually forced Warwick to kind of just hold to stop on un Nuo from going even more aggressive. Dang, and that's gonna be Flash still available for both those midliners with the passive blown by Lepus. That's gonna be kind of scary if you don't have that egg and you also haven't had the timeout come through. There's a short window here where after teleporting into lane, this Lepus here without his Agnivia is going to have to be worried until that stopwatch comes off cooldown and is available that first time. Yeah, and this has been such a quiet kind of early game. We're so used to explosions by this point in the game already. A stun's going to hit on Dreamy, but there's no follow-up right now. And these teams seem to know what's at stake here. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that they didn't go more aggressive on a Dreamy right there. He was pushed up a little far forward. Blazing it wasn't CC'd other than the first slow of that Winter's Bite. But Tristano is still far back trying to farm up those minions, so you kind of have to be worried about that. It's nice stun from my pick, Phil. We know he did so much work on that Leona. Looks like he's doing more of the same on this Tark. Now two Biscuits in the inventory of I Am Blazing it here on this Ezreal. He's just going to hold on to those. Probably going to end up selling the potion in his inventory if he doesn't end up using it here in lane but he's got a little bit of a cs advantage for himself right now nice pings come through from this bottom lane i'm just curious to see where these junglers are actually going to uh, apply real pressure or try for some ganks yeah you know you really think of jarvin as that early game jungler um very good ganks as early as level three granted something like an Ezreal is very difficult to gank, but Anivia is not. And I almost wonder if he's waiting for level 6 to almost try and guarantee a kill on Lepis. But with the lead that Anuo has, it seems overly conservative right now. Yeah, it does. And I mean, even to wait for Cataclysm to be available here for barcode, Lepis here on Anivia does have Flash available, though she lost the passive on Anivia. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the kill threat is all there. She can flash out of the Cataclysm. Unless they pop the egg instantly and keep that in the Cataclysm, then there's still the possibility that Lepus could survive an ultimate gank from, from this Jarvan. Nice on in this top lane. Gonna be a little bit of a trade back and forth. Most of them just trading their health bars equally. But Warwick trying to create a little bit of pressure. Kind of shows near mid lane. Probably was spotted out by that. Blue Ward as he makes his way down bottom lane. This could be actually an explosive fight down here in the bottom lane. I am blazing it. Low mana. He doesn't even have his spells available. He uses the heal. He's going to get stunned. Nice. Knock up would have hit. Barco forces the flash. There's going to be a fear for this Tristana. Forces the flash away. Almost every single summer spell blown. Only flash is available for these supports. The fight still going on. Winter's fight into those cooking cuts with blows. I pick Phil. Nice level six from the Jarvan, but level six from Shen. This fight has been going on for a full minute as Lepis dies. First blood in his own jungle. There's going to be so much of a trade down happening down here. Nice, nice stun. Oh my goodness. I pick Phil. He got low. Used every single summoner spell he could. Holds on to that ultimate because he didn't have the mana for it. And that Shen ultimate was the game changer, Vic. Talk to me about that fight. Yeah, that was so intense. Both sides kind of looked so willing to take it. It was a great starting engage from Fairfail. They really wanted that. You know they wanted to try and make something happen. Stop high and blazing it from rolling. And just really good disengage. They bought time. They allowed Anaphase to get far enough away from Malorla that the Gnar had no chance to try and stop the Shen ultimate. And a, a little unfortunately for Green Knights was the fact that Anuo is so strong right now that he just found Lepis trying to rotate down and killed him to get first blood himself. Yeah, real nice heads up play by Anuo to catch that rotation out. And kind of unfortunate too, though, on the flip side, for Fairfell here with uh, Zabi JV and Dreamy in the bottom lane not hitting level 6 during that fight, whereas the opposite was true. Luckily for them, no level 6 did come through for Ezreal and Tarek. There wasn't mana available to cast those spells, but still, the additional health, armor, or magic resist that can come through from a level up can make that huge difference and may have actually made the difference in that fight for those two players. 
and that bottom lane fight was just so explosive. Pretty much every summoner spell used across the entire map. Only Flash available for this Gnar, and then Kletz for the Lucian, but everyone else has used their entire rotation of summoner spells in the last few minutes. Yeah, and it's gonna be insane. We were talking about how Fairfield kind of felt like they had to win early, and oh, we might see another fight fought. Nope, yes. just the side. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just side pick Phil playing aggressive. Leona or Tarek, he's going to be looking for every opportunity to get a catch here, so I, I respect that kind of play. It is really scary to play against some support that will always play aggressive, and it isn't afraid to engage at every waking moment. Yeah, and you know, we were what I was trying to say, we were talking about the early game and how important it was for Fairfell. While they didn't lose anything from that trade bot lane, like no tower, no dragon, it still is only holding gold even, which you have to feel benefits the Green Knights at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And as far as tower tower damage goes, it really hasn't has been very it has been very quiet across the entire map other than mid lane. On to a oh, we see Warwick missing his ultimate. Cataclysm is available for this Jarvan, but he's forced to just run away. There's the flag and drag. He's down to 40% health. Really aggressive and heads up play by Brock here on this Warwick. But what I was saying is, in terms of the actual map pressure, a massive CS lead. Cole completed. You can see that gold being a huge difference. This Lucian, I mentioned, on a one on this Lucian, the strongest player on his team, and in a very aggressive early game lane bully, and he's doing just that, securing a solo kill for himself, a massive CS lead. And if you check just the map, the mini-map, the icons themselves, you can see that Lepis' turret is the lowest on the map at this point. Yeah, and we've seen some Lucian pop off. Xanaphase is in some trouble here. Yeah, he is. Allure Love on this Gnar saying, I'm a ranged champion. Just because I'm not an AD carry anymore doesn't mean I can't get kills for myself. That's a lot of damage. Gnar gonna get a solo kill for himself. That's both solo laners for a fair fail, getting a solo kill for themselves. And it's exactly what we talked about, Superman. We said it's up to the solo laners from Fairfail, it kind of felt like is Anu Love trying to go aggressive as well. Anything a War Love can do, he can do as well. Yes, yeah, so Anuo using that cleanse to try and add a little bit more damage. Oh my goodness, the Warwick goes way deep back there. Lure Love, well, a couple more autos would have done it, but there's the ultimate from the Shen. It doesn't actually come through. The last damage from that Gnar will actually get the kill. And there's the passive from Anivia. She's going to be sitting there for a while. Will Anuo have enough damage? He's next to a turret. Could be really scary. 500 health left. 400. The wall doesn't actually keep him in, but he's got 200 health, and he's sitting in a glacial storm. The stun might be enough. Oh, it is! And there's going to be the Comet plus auto attack. Nice. Hourglass comes through, but it probably won't save unless one more auto attack. Maybe two. Okay, there's going to be a Jarvan turns around to get that kill. Nice Cataclysm to follow it up, but nice turnaround by Lepis getting a solo kill in return against Anuo. They're not giving up just because the solos lost a kill each. Yeah, and we finally kind of saw Anuo's aggressive dashing in and out, using his spells aggressively, start to bite him. Anivia can do so much damage so unexpectedly quickly. And it just resulted in Anuo maybe losing a bit of this if bot laner going at it though. Yeah, they are. And actually, I pick Phil is down. You know that when Tar gets low, he has to channel that teleport for his spell. There's going to be the Anaphase coming in. He didn't have ultimate available. Oh, it wasn't Anaphase. It was actually Lepis who comes through, flashes over the wall, flashes over his own wall, and Lepis showing up big there. And I pick Phil doing the support life, giving it his life to secure a kill and billions of summoner spells as Tristan is going to have to back off. I don't think Ezreal will have the damage to take this turret on his own, but you can see Allure Love just putting out the pain here in the top lane saying, I'm sorry, top lane belongs to me. Back off. Yeah, and we're, you were saying Ezreal's not going to have the damage, but he has a large minion wave and he does have the Monomune. It's going to be very close. You can see Anuo actually trying to race him here get the mid lane tower i don't know it looks like advantage green knights and they might get first tower yeah and we're past that break point on the match that i talked about where it's five to four overall but we're at the 14 minute mark nice stun into a knock up here comes through and that's actually going to be a kill on warwick he didn't expect the jarvan to show up with a nice knock up under the tower cataclysm almost back off cooldown the red buff did apply a slow on duo has the most damage here and he's not the one who got stunned up Oh, Tara flash over the wall, trying to get a stun to happen, but it wouldn't have been able to be followed up anyway. These trades in the top lane are just back and forth and back and forth as Anaphase is trying to keep Allure Love off the turret. But first turret was secured down in bottom lane. Nice defense by the Green Knights in mid. Securing themselves first turret 
bonus for this Ezreal with that Kleptomancy. First turret gold and three assists to boot. He is almost at 6,000 gold in his inventory, putting him over 1,000 gold up on the enemy 80 carry. So really doing a lot for himself at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Not quite the advantage that we saw for him last game, uh, obviously, but still so strong. And you're kind of seeing why these teams are one and two. As these, This is probably the closest game I have seen in the last couple of weeks. Uh, these teams trading blows, neither of them wanting to give this up. Yeah, really well played by both of these squads so far. Bottom lane backing off, knowing that they don't have vision in the river far enough up to know where the Warwick is. Alurla pressing the attack in top lane quite literally with that keystone. Brock showing up, but they don't know if Nar is actually still in the lane. But a couple turrets really close to following, meaning that gold will swing back over in favor of Fairfell quite soon, unless a fight happens in favor of the Green Knights. Yeah, and the thing is, even with the Green Knights' advantages, they don't have a gold lead because of the CS in mid and in top as Lepis could jump on. Well, it looks like they actually wanted this fight, Lepis. Last second, the Tarek ult comes through and blacks that final auto attack. And that was massive because the bird did not have passive available on Nuo. A couple hundred health left. And it looks like Iron Blazing it. Not going to be able to secure that last kill, but that Tarek ultimate was so clutch, saving the life of Lepis here on Anivia in that mid lane. Able to clear these waves faster and faster. That Ocean Drake gonna do work, healing them back up. And there's a teleport coming through. I'm not sure about this choice by Allure Love. The turret might actually fall faster than it can take for him to get there. But there's gonna be a nice Warwick ult coming through. Ultimate from Braum gonna keep them under the turret. And now that Ignivia was tanking the turret, but back to full health. There's a lot of damage from High and Blazing it. Going to have that Cryo Phoenix come back to life. They'll back off after securing their second turret of the game. If they back off completely, though, it's likely Anuo could take this mid-turret. Yeah, absolutely. And again, what we mentioned at the beginning of this game, Superman, is happening. When you fight the Green Knights, you are not just fighting one person. Anuo saw blood in the eyes when he went for Lepis, but there was three, four members of the Green Knights ready, and they're going to trade the mid-tower, but it still feels like advantage Green Knights. Yeah, sure does. Brock doesn't have his ultimate here on the Warwick to actually cause a chase to happen. But look at the CS numbers, Vic. On Nuo, 2-1, and one, kinda got caught in the last fight. Didn't actually die, though. Was able to stay alive by using his summoner spell. But he's he's got so many minion kills. If we're looking at the gold overall, Vic, then we know that the Ezreal's fed. He's at 7.1k, but on Nuo is at 7.8 thousand. He's got 600 gold plus of an advantage over the enemy Ezreal when he himself has died on Lucian in mid lane, but still is up almost 40 CS over his lane opponent. Yeah, and we'll really have to see. This finally feels like the game where we're going to get one of those big explosive LCS style team fights that's actually going to help decide a game. You know, so many of the games this season have been skirmishes and picks, and I'm excited to see an explosive team fight between these two teams. Yeah, and it looks like it might happen right here with Rift Herald on the table. You can see I am Blazing it, trying to poke, poke them out. But there's a lot of movement speed with that Rift Herald area. And it looks like here comes the fight. Will we see a Cataclysm? Yes, it catches a couple of people, but here's the Tark Ultimate. Actually makes three people invulnerable. Rom is going to be the first to fall. Anna Fae is on this Shen, just zoning away a billion people. Oh my goodness, a double kill. Alurlove actually turns things around. That ultimate was insane. There's Lucian. He's down to 150 health. And the last auto attack from Shen will do it. Now it's 2v1. Double kill for this Tristana. A triple kill would have been it, but it's a triple for Alurlove instead. He says, yeah, you're 80 carry, but so am I. You can get a couple as Tristana, but I am the 80 carry as this Nar. That's going to be a triple for Alurlove. A double for ZG, uh, ZBJB here on this Tristana, and that's gonna be an ace. Only 18 and a half minutes in. Five kills, four, three, a really close fight, and that's gonna be the Rift Herald secured. Superman, what the heck just happened? I was watching a fight where Dreamy and Barcode were dead in like three seconds to start the fight. You know, the it was a near perfect ultimate from I picked Phil. He got three people invulnerable. But a war love on Nuo, ZBJB, the trio from Fairfell, never say die. And when you don't kill, you can kill the tanks all you want. When you don't kill the damage, that fight got turned on its head.
so quickly. Yeah, it really did. I mean, we thought that because of that amazing Tark ultimate and just having people sitting on top of that Anivia ultimate for a while, that that would mean disaster for Fair Fail. But somehow you just have Zabie, JV, and Allure Love sitting there hitting people over and over, and we saw that amazing. Like you mentioned before, Vic, a scary thing that you can see from this amazing player we know as Allure Love, he got an ultimate on multiple target and got a double kill with his Q in Meganar form in one hit. So that was really, really strong for him. Turns around, helps secure another, and that's the ace overall. That means a 3,000 gold advantage at 20 minutes here in favor of Fair Fail. And they did get the Rift Herald. We'll see where they decide to use it, where it's here as a passive here for Allure Love in top lane. Yeah, the really scary thing though, if you're Fair Fail, look at the items coming out. We have so many cloth armors. We see Bramble Vest everywhere, and the two item Ezreal, I am blazing it, got his Triforce, has the Muramana completely stacked. He is online. Well, that was actually really close to almost getting a steal. High on blazing it, landed the Q, only 40 health afterwards. Almost stole the blue buff away. But you did mention all this armor coming out here from the Green Knights. You can see a couple of cloth armors plus in multiple inventories. Tobi completed by Brock. You know that he's going to be in the front, and he's already got his Titanic Hydra completed. All he has to build is health and armor now, and he'll already have enough damage to trade against even the backline of Fair Fail. Yeah, I do like the adaptation, though, from Fair Fail. We talked about the Cleaver stacking, and they're going to go on Anaphase. Yeah, it looks like Ando has enough damage. He's got the Black Cleaver build, and that's going to be the culling. Taking the kill, Ando won. Now 3, 2, and 5 on this Lucian. He has so much health and damage. That build is a really strong win against this composition. We said what the Fair Fail has to do against the Green Knights is actually snowball the lead, take early towers, and get that gold advantage to insanely increase. And that seems to be what they're doing. Oh my goodness, they've started to fight 3v3. But there's more members here for Blue as the Tarkle wears off, but nobody actually fell during the duration as Brock gets really, really low. One more auto attack should do it. The Glacial Prison is going to be enough. All right, we got the Tarik ultimate coming through. I pick Bell. His ultimate was used at the beginning of the fight. There's not actually enough. Nice shadow ultimate actually saves his life from the Tristana. There's really, really low health bars. Nice shutdown. This bird gets a triple kill. Everybody having to walk through that glacial storm. So much damage. Alula forced to flash up. Excuse me. Jump over the wall and take that explosive plant. He's going to get chased by the Ezreal. Shen looking for blood still. Yeah, and... I, I'm still, these fights are so insane, Superman, as we see Green Knights on this bear and they're going for it. But it seems like if you start the fight, you're not winning the fight just because of so much disengage and turnaround from both these teams. Can Orlov be a hero for Fairfell? Maybe. He was in the last fight. His rage bar is building up. He has one more half second. But he actually will die mid-air, and that's going to be a thousand health remaining on the Baron. He gets so close, though, if Jarvan might have gone for it, he might have been able to steal it. Unfortunately, he will just donate a kill back over. Baron picked up and an additional kill. That's four in a row now for this Anivia. Anivia, so strong, completing Hourglass. A fully stacked Roa. Oh my goodness, it looks like Ezreal actually gets caught. A crit after crit after crit, and there's a Winter's Bite to slow him. The last auto attack will do it. Crits as well. And that's going to be Tristana getting another kill and taking Baron off of one of the five members of Green Knights. The Green Knights, they turned everything around. Though they are down in gold, they have Baron buff ready to defend their base and perhaps even push aggressively as Dreamy is getting caught out. Nice wall. It's going to actually create a lot of damage. Zayji, Zay. ZBJB, I just can't say his name right, Vic. He's trying to walk over to try and save that. But nice pick. Pick after pick. I'm not sure what's happening, but it looks to me as though Fair Fail is doing just that. They're fair, but they're failing because they keep getting caught out one after another after another, Vic. What can they do? Yeah, they seem to really be pressing now, Superman. They're trying so much. They look for a fight when they really could have just gotten tower top lane. It's snowballed into a Baron. It could snowball into an inhib tower in a game that has been so close for so long. It's still not even a thousand gold between these teams. Finally looks like it might reach a point, but they're going in. Oh, nice triple knockup into a Cataclysm, into a Nar ultimate. That was just amazingly synergized play right there. I think Phil is getting really low. One more auto attack will do it. That's a reset for Tristana, but she gets stunned. 
The kill credit did go over to Dreamy L. On this Brawn, he's got a lot of health in his kit, meaning he can actually heal his team for a significant amount. You saw it right there, 119 health going over to say the ZBJB. I can't say that name. I'm just not even going to try anymore. Tristana is his name. And it looks like this Cloud Drake is next, Vic. But there's still Baron buff on multiple, multiple members of Green Knights. Will they just give up the dragon? I'm not sure why you would. Your dra is dragon more important than the jungle? I'm not sure. It is a Cloud Drake. I can understand. It would only be the first for Green Knights. Not necessarily worth maybe losing another Baron buff for, especially when you're already uh, kind of outnumbered. And Anuo just looking for high and blazing it. Yeah, and actually the calling itself does half his health. And there's going to be the Shen ult comes through. And a flash. That's just way too much. But a really nice play there by Anuo to force out not just a summoner spell, but an extremely long cooldown on that Shen ult. Stand United, gonna be on cooldown for at least a couple of minutes or so. But you did mention the Cloud Drake. I actually think it's an extremely poor decision by Green Knights to allow the Cloud Drake to go over to Fairfell. They had enough members to contest. And but more importantly, Vic. I think the Cloud Drake is actually extremely, extremely valuable to deny. Not necessarily that it's really good for the Green Knights, but it's extremely important to deny from Fairfell because Fairfell's win condition is using their attack damage champions to burn down structures as quickly as possible. And having the Cloud Drake actually gives them the mobility, the mobility they need to get through here as Lepus is actually taking the turret teleports come through from a couple people and there's going to be oh just the last second there oh my goodness a slight auto attack there's gonna be a nice cue from the warwick gets the kill onto i know that's a lot of damage missing allure love alone split from his team but zavi jv on this back side actually gets a kill for himself resets gets away but there's allure love he's got only a couple hundred health one runner out attack might have gotten him but nice shield comes through from they bomb saves his life here's going to be the redemption as well you see that backside fight the cataclysm came through but now barcode and dreamy already on the front side dreamy gets his shield up and that's actually almost saves his life but Iron Blazing it picks up yet another kill for himself. Gets nice poke down. He's actually completed that Triforce Muramana and Blade of the Room King. This is a massive power spike for an Ezreal. As you can see that Ocean Drake healing their lower members back up as well. That's going to be another turret falling. That's two in quick succession. Now that gold lead up to almost 3,000 gold. Baron Buff has worn off at this point. It's a few more minutes before the next one even starts to show up. We'll have to see how things play out. Blue buff is going to be transferred over to Lepis. But these carries, AD carry Ezreal, AP carry Anivia, and top lane carry, really, Anaphase here with so much armor. He's just going to get more on that. I, I don't know how you can handle this. We talked about this in Champions like Vic. The armor, it's happening. Yeah, absolutely. And Fairfell are trying so hard to contest kind of everything. I was stunned when Allure Love completed his TP up to that top lane when you kind of knew Anuo was already dead. So even if the rest of the, your team is coming in, it's an odd numbered fight and one of your black cleavers is off of the map. I do like the adaptation of a double uh, Aegis coming out from Fairfell, just really trying to start nullifying this Anivia I don't know how you're nullifying high and blazing it though. It looks like you give him your Ezreal, you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, I mean, he just has so much gold from his Kleptomancy in Lady Blaze. And then of course, right now, as we might actually be getting a catch once again to Onuo, we know that he's supposedly the best member in this match, but if he keeps getting caught, he's not actually worth anything. But about that Ezreal you mentioned, he's up 3,000 or at least a couple thousand gold over the Tristana. Tristana five and two, whereas Ezreal is three and two down on the CS as well. Of course, there's global gold that contributes to this Kleptomancy from laning phase. It's now at the point where Tristana might actually outscale. We saw that damage from this Ezreal has been so incredibly strong. Melting people, especially now that he has uh, his own armor penetration. Oh my goodness, nice taunt though, onto Barcode, his Cataclysm is available, he gets a few, nice ultimate from Allure Love as well, he has his ultimate available to throw people against the wall, double kill from this Ezreal, he's gonna get really low and there, so Shasana gets a kill, one more auto attack might do it, the burn from Red Buff is enough, there's a triple kill from this Ezreal, will he actually be able to get more, he's waiting for that Arcane Shift, there's the Q, one more, oh it doesn't hit him, and that's gonna be 
overall a four for one it's a full five numbers but it's not on one side versus the other that's gonna be only on Nuo remaining no culling in order to help with the wave it's not a barren duff wave mind you or a supers wave but this is going to be the inhibitor falling in mid lane i am blazing it putting up so much damage in that fight yeah, absolutely, sir, man. We're seeing that's the second fight this game where we've seen a beautiful engage. It looks so good, but they're not getting onto the carries fully. Uh, I picked Phil having staying alive so long. High and Blazing it maybe caught again trying to recall, but he's okay. Uh, but Lepis and High and Blazing it stayed alive. High and Blazing it almost didn't take damage in that fight until the very end. It was such a good thought from Fairfell there, and its execution looked really good at the beginning but the the Tarek ultimate the Ezreal being able to stay in the back line and stay out of the initial engage and Allure Love the ultimate only actually stunned I think one person even though it hit four so a lot of just small things are what are stopping Fairfield from really being in control of this game themselves yeah Allure Love trying to do his best six two and five on that Nar, you mentioned his ultimate. He did get a really good one. It needed to stun a few more to maybe make more of a difference. But now we've got Inferno spawning in 20 seconds. Baron already on the map. There's Vision being fought over for both these teams, but seems like Fairfell's in a better position. They just have to shove out mid, keep those supers out of their base so that they can actually contest these objectives. Yeah, and even Ezreal is getting into the party, Superman. He has his own armor item, and he doesn't want to die either, but they keep looking for it. Yeah, nice done, actually. Dreamy has to flash over to stay out of the fight. He's down to about 100 health. Nice. Arcane ship actually gets the kill credit itself. Double kill onto the Tristana. Ezreal's just popping off. I said he could get out scaled by a Tristana, but not if Tristana's just completely dead. That's going to be 40 second death timers on three different members. That's a free Baron coming through 24 kills to 17. We're 30 minutes into this match, Vic. Could this be the end with this Baron push? Yeah, the Baron's going to be very helpful for trying to get through that wave clear of all these AD carry champions. This is what we were so worried about for Fairfell, Superman, is as this game goes longer and longer, it is three armor items on the Shin right now. Anaphase is sitting at 300 armor. Even with two Black Cleavers and a Blade of the Rune King and whatever else you want, you are not going to shred through that quick enough to kill the Shin. No, not at all. And of course, his W field blocking auto attacks going to also contribute to that insane level of tankiness. You said even even the Ezreal with the Tabi with the rant uh, with his uh, cold steel passive there. Like there's just so much armor across the entire board. I mean, even the Anivia has a shield from our Surf's embrace to stay tanky on top of her own hourglass that has, of course, armor in its kit as well. But you're, now you're gonna see four members, Ezreal almost there, so five members pushing down into the bottom lane. You can see that they're forcing Anuo to deal with the super minions. Yeah, absolutely. And this is maybe, as much as you don't want to, you start kind of wondering what if for Fairfell, what if they had that AP champion in the mid lane for Anuo? Just something that could have stopped this constant armor stack from Green Knights as they take the second inhib and look really strong. Yeah, really, really strong. And now that's going to be two inhibitors falling. This poke damage from High End Blazing it actually doing work. You can see when they land onto Allure Love, he gets really, really low really quickly because he doesn't have that armor. He just has magic resistant health. And you can see how much damage this Ezreal can actually do when a, a Muromana proc can deal so much damage on that Q, that Triforce proc. Dealing on hit damage from both the Muramana as well as the Blade of the Ruin King. Armor penetration to boot. So 250 CS is negligible at 30, 35 minutes ish here into the match. But having so much global, global, global excuse me, global gold, eight turrets to four, it's just a massive advantage. They're pressing into this base, Vic. Yeah, and one thing I kind of want to point out, I looked through every champion on Green Knights. Anivia has the lowest armor at 130. No one else on the team has less than 150, and, well, Anuo is almost dead, so... Oh my goodness, he's down to very low health. Dreamy forced to ultimate to try and just slow things down, but Iron Blazing almost gets a kill on Tabram. 
forcing the Brum to shield up and hop back to his teammate over. And there's going to be an Eganar. Will it even be enough? Oh my goodness, he dies within the stun. Not even able to use his ultimate. That's going to be another kill here for this Ezreal. He's got nine kills overall. Xavi JV actually ends up dying to this Shen. The 400 armor Shen. Dreamy L going to die as well. That's going to be two kills in this fight. Legendary Ezreal. Seems that this pick does work for them. Two games in a row. Flashing onto the platform, Lepus leaving his special storm to give a little shiny finish to a Nexus explosion. Two victories in a row. Green Knights with the win once again. Really well played. Yeah, the win and the secure of first place. They've had it all season. They didn't want to give it up on the final game. And it, it kind of played out how we thought it would, Superman. The teams fought so close. It was such a close game. These are obviously the top two teams in the league this season. They showed it, but as the game got longer and longer, over 200 armor on three members of the Green Knights, and we saw those last few fights, there was just so little that Fairfell could actually do. Yeah, they did try, and they had kind of an early game lead, Vic, but you need that armor pen as quickly and as soon as possible. You only had a couple of last whispers by the end there. It's not enough to deal with 300-plus armor on multiple members. You saw even the AD carry and AP carry building armor and items of their own. An early completed frozen heart for the Tarek is just going to reduce pretty much 20%. 20% attack speed debuff. Onto the enemy team means 20% damage reduction almost overall, meaning there's no way your team actually ends up falling. It ended up being 27 to 17 in only 35 minutes. It took them twice as long to finish the game, but Green Knights ended up doing it. I want to thank you all for tuning into today's broadcast. You just saw the Green Knights once again take an amazing victory, this time over Fairfail. And remember, you can catch action of uh, multiple different titles starting with 3.30. The playoffs next week on the 29th of November will be Overwatch starting first again on that date, 3.30 on the 29th of November. And then, of course, the next day to follow, the 30th of November, we'll be hitting you with League of Legends. So hit that follow button at the bottom of your channel, guys. It's at official EGF here on Twitch and Twitter to stay up to date. I'm Superman. I've been casting for you alongside Vic Sharp. You can follow me at Superman Casting on Twitch, on Twitter. I'd love to see you follow me as well. But Vic Sharp, thanks for casting with me, man. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I cannot wait for these playoffs to start on that date, November 30th. You know, it's going to be a lot of fun. The season's been leading up to this. It was a great games today. And you can follow me at the Vic Sharp. But it was a great time for Superman and for myself. We will see you guys next time.